We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. If the sky was a vacuum, that would be an availability of volume for the gas we breathe to fill. And fill it it must, that's what gas does, it expands in all directions. So the gas we're breathing, which is at pressure, would fill the sky vacuum. Now their response is often to say, well we have a gas pressure gradient, which is merely a delta of the original question and assertion when you've got a sky vacuum belief. How can you have gas pressure in the first instance without a container? And they would say, well, a delta of gas pressure, gas pressure gradient is something we experience. It's like, well, how did you achieve the gas pressure in the first place without containment? And the answer is, you can't. It stands directly in violation of several natural laws. Without the container, there can be no pressure. Therefore, if the sky was a vacuum, as asserted in the heliocentric rhetoric, then the gas we breathe would fill the space. Outer space, claimed to be a vacuum, is fake. Therefore, any claims from that claim to be sky vacuum are automatically fake. Including, but not limited to, pictures of Earth from space. The region is fake, second law of thermodynamics violation, therefore the pictures claimed to have come from the fake region are also fake. Orbits in a sky vacuum, which is also a begging the question fallacy, which I won't detail now, is claimed to take place in a fake place called space, therefore automatically fake. Same goes for satellites, all debunked by the second law of thermodynamics and several other Laws of nature, descriptions of how things occur always. Standard gas law, Boyle's law, Avogadro's law. These are all violated by the assertion that we have a sky vacuum. We don't. And any stage performance that comes from that region is also fake, including the ISS. Taking place on a stage, on Earth, on high wire, not in a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum. After 21 hours and 36 minutes on the moon, a perfect liftoff, and the astronauts are now in lunar orbit, ready to join for the journey home. The scenes which follow are taken from a communist propaganda film, now being shown in America for the first time. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. How can I make some money and make a movie? Well, I can make porno, that's good. was a vacuum as asserted in the heliocentric rhetoric then the gas we breathe would fill the space outer space claimed to be a vacuum is fake therefore any claims from that claim to be sky vacuum are automatically fake
We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. It's called real good engineering. Tell us, what is this video? I'm not quite following it on right now. Well, that looks like a Buzz Aldrin photograph there. <clears throat> I can't see it too clearly from my angle here. Is this a documentary about the moon missions? I believe. So. Well, it's, I think it's a series of uh, <clears throat> a series of clips and vignettes. I'm not quite sure that's a documentary. Was this something from broadcast or something that? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'd, without looking at the label and looking at it more closely, I can. Do, I have a dozens of these things in here. What What is this? They're talking about shadows and stuff like that. What is that all about? You know, this might have come from <clears throat> some of the challenges to the fact, <clears throat> ah, yes, <clears throat> from the challenges by the group that has said we never went to the moon, and they're trying to pick holes in some of the lunar photographs. And it, <clears throat> it's an interesting subject because uh, they're totally misguided. We did exactly what we said we did. Uh, and they can pick hole, try to pick holes in the photography uh, all they want to, but uh... why is it that you have a copy of it? Big pardon. Oh, why do you have a copy of it? People send me stuff all the time. I <coughs> I have boxes and boxes of, of video from uh, various television programs, various uh, speeches that I've done. Uh, I must have three or four hundred of them. I don't. I look at very few of them. So someone sent you this? I'm sure that, well they obviously did, that's why I have it. Oh, so it's not something that you acquired no. or ordered or anything no. like that? You have to understand, I get, I get a dozen, at least a dozen books a month to review. Half, two or three, maybe four dozen uh, videos a year from various people just want me to have it, so they send it along. As Shepard and Mitchell rested, Stuart Musa continued his work from lunar orbit. As Shepard and Mitchell rested, Stuart Musa continued his work from lunar orbit.
Hi, everybody. How are you today? This is great. Welcome to that NASA show. This is an exciting half hour about fashions. Exciting half hour about fashions. because we have proof that would prove it in a court of law that Apollo 11 didn't go to the moon. <laughs> traveled safely through deadly Van Allen radiation belts unscathed. In late 2015, NASA posted a video on their official website regarding testing of the new Orion spacecraft, reportedly attempting to reach 3,600 miles away from Earth. The NASA engineer went on to surprisingly and proudly explain that this test flight would travel higher up into space than we have ever been before with Orion's shielding being put to the test to protect delicate electronics and guidance systems, and, more importantly stressing, before they send humans this far up into space. Wasn't this shielding problem solved nearly half a century ago? Or maybe NASA doesn't remember they'd solved this problem, seeing as they've confessed to losing all 14,000 reels of telemetry data, including blueprints and all original videos for all the Apollo missions. So NASA has not just misplaced, but has lost forever all documentation, evidence, and physical proof of what's been referred to as the greatest accomplishment in all human history. How can something so vital to our national security and history that you'd expect to be stored in the National Air and Space Museum, or even possibly Fort Knox, be lost forever? Well, unless this documentation was intentionally lost, destroyed, or maybe it never even existed at all. We show you on energy, on ground track, nav is go.
we never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. I wanna promise you I'm human. I pinch myself to find out whether it was really happening. I called the moon my home for three days of my life and I'm not here to tell you about it. That's science fiction. That's science fiction. How do you balance science with science fiction? Well, they're both the same. Well, they're both the same. Well, they're both the same. CBS Television presents a special report on Sputnik 1, the Soviet space satellite. Douglas Edwards reporting. Until two days ago, that sound had never been heard on this earth. Suddenly, it has become as much a part of 20th century life as the whir of your vacuum cleaner. It's a report from man's farthest frontier, the radio signal transmitted by the Soviet Sputnik, the first man-made satellite as it passed over New York earlier today. We didn't deny Sputnik was up there. We didn't argue about the science or shrink our research and development budget. We built a space program almost overnight, and 12 years later, we were walking on the moon. Out of the pictures that they take, walking on the moon. I know that it's a big walking on the moon. They think they're so clever Walking on the moon They can last forever Walking on, walking on the moon never went to the moon and I'm not gonna stop I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids
Hi, I wanted to read you guys something that I wrote out and um, it's because it's kind of emotional and I didn't want to miss any points, but uh, it's it's called Why I Fight. And uh, if you like it, send it to someone, you know, spread the word. All right. <clears throat> Oof. All right, I was, uh, I was exposed to sexual depravity as a child. I've never talked about it publicly and I'm not going to anymore. In fact, it's kind of weird when people want to know details about stuff like that. It doesn't define who I am, and it's just something you have to know to understand the biggest pic bigger picture of who I am and what I'm trying to tell people and why. I'm not a victim, and I come from a loving family with a hardworking father and a mother who did everything to protect her kids, and I don't even want to say this out loud and on video because it, it would make her sad. Uh, it's not her fault at all but we live in a fallen world and I don't say I was abused because life itself is full of abuse life is abuse so that doesn't differentiate anything leaving your house you will be abused by the weather and the most corrosive abusive force on the planet is uh, is time itself I know what monsters look like and how they act that's why I just shared that piece of personal information with you I know how they seek positions of unquestioned authority, how they live in the upside down world that we are now seeing more and more of, a world where lies are truth, apologies are submission, submission is an apology, questions are tyranny, curiosity, unscientific, destruction is progress, progress is destruction, tradition is slavery and love, of course, is oppression. Becoming a father myself and feeling that ancient drive to protect, while at the same time I watch this rise in the open and accepted sexual abuse of children disguised as tolerance, uh, sent me on nothing short of a war path. I've been fighting a full-blown all-out war for two years now, and I won't stop even after I'm dead. That's why we write words to paper. That's why we make videos. It's because death doesn't stop our ability to fight. I've had many casualties of this war. Career opportunities, friends, alienation of family members. But I'm never gonna stop, even after I'm dead. So why have I been relentlessly chipping away at the moon landing story? I've been asked this a lot lately, and that's one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I want to make it completely and unquestionably true why I'm doing it, <laughs> at least. Because I saw Bill Nye on his show, Bill Nye Saves the World. He said that a two-year-old can now choose their gender, and it is science, and it is peer-reviewed, and everyone's wearing a lab coat, and it is, of course, factual. I saw a flash of a monster that I haven't seen in many, many years. I saw it clear as day. And when I saw parents break their ancient protection instincts and serve their own children to this new idea of gender fluid infants, it reminded me of the stories of Aztec sacrifice. I always wondered how people could do that. How they could offer up their children to the great pyramid. I know science well and I've always loved it. And one scientific experiment was the Milgram experiment, proving the human submission to authority. And in this moment, I saw a new science, a science not based in fact, but in the occult and ritual and pain and death and an abuse. The monsters seek authority. The Aztec priest ripping out the heart of a baby and eating it, the top of that pyramid, as the indoctrinated masses say, praise, praise be to the one who saves us. And that's the thing about monsters, ladies and gentlemen, that's the thing about evil. And I know evil. Evil makes you love him as he takes everything from you. I'm a Christian and I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but that is my faith and I could not prove it. That is why my logic is consistent 
and my logic is sound. My science is good. Faith lives in the soul and in a spiritual world that cannot be put in beakers and it doesn't wear lab coats, nor should it. But this new religion of science, just like what all monsters do, claims the opposite of what it is. It mimics. It says it isn't a religion at all. It is a fact. God, this is not easy for me to read. This is, uh, I have a rage response to some of this stuff. For two years now, I have cut off the heads of thousands of the cultural hydra. Meme after meme, show after show. I point out what they're doing. I speak it. People agree, they support me, or they hate me. They try to ruin me, but it's done nothing. The hydra just keeps popping up new heads because I wasn't attacking the heart of the monster properly. I wasn't showing the new cult of science for what it actually is. And these aren't your saviors. These aren't your priests. These are monsters. And I'm fighting to win. It started with the moon landing. It is the one event that I can prove without any reasonable logical doubt that was faked and why it was faked. NASA says it has destroyed the technology and it cannot be rebuilt. Just like Joseph Smith and his seer stones. The lack of voltage alone and the extreme temperature fluctuation of upwards of 600 degrees Celsius at 290,000 miles away would make TV transmission um, impossible with any form of electricity, especially through the 60,000 kilometer Van Allen belt, which is basically a giant nuclear explosion. No one has ever gone back despite people's never ending desire to explore our solar system. No other country has attempted to plant their flag uh, on the moon next to ours, which contradicts the very nature of countries, corporations, and of course, humankind itself. People still go to Greenland, but not the moon, despite $24 billion a year in funding. But in 1969, with less tech than a cell phone, they did it and played a round of golf on that moon. That is a lie. This is a religion. If you accept Neil Armstrong as your personal savior without any proof, you are in. And most people don't know it. They think it's fact. They don't see it because they don't understand the nature of monsters. Pedophilia isn't about sex. It's about control. It's about continuing the cycle so you don't have to face the reality that this world is fallen and broken and full of snakes and it's exhausting and it hurts and it's a never ending war to spot out and kill the snakes that want to eat your kids. I get why people ignore this stuff. It's tiring. When you have to face what happened to you and what happens to people, it hurts horribly bad. I understand moral relativity. I know why people do it. I don't. If you tell me that you understand, if you, if you, if you understand, if you accept science as your savior, that you have faith in science and it is not based in fact, if you tell me you understand that the food pyramid, hairspray, ozone layer, gender, gender neutral science in the lab coat of the priest, if you understand that that's faith, you at least know you're in a cult, which is half the battle. It's a very important part of the battle. If you know you're in a cult, if you're self-aware that you're in a materialistic fallen cult, good for you. But just please protect your children because that's all we got. Becoming a father has changed me in, in very, very profound and deep spiritual ways, all for the good. If we can't protect our kids, what's our point? Kids are hope. Kids are the future. Kids are all we got. And if you sacrifice your children on this new altar, you're pathetic, you're a coward, and the snakes will eat you. They come for everybody, they have no allies. Snakes have no friends. They're cold blooded, they seek warmth, and they'll suck your blood dry. Trust me, I know snakes, I know snakes. 
We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. And talk about the things that interested us most. In particular, the, the uh, things that occurred on and about the moon. We will use a number of films and, and slides, which most of you have already seen, with the intent of, of pointing out some of the things that we observed on the, the spot, which may not be obvious to, to those of you who are, who are uh, looking at them here from the surf surface of Earth. in the back room Get the president out of the way and hire Stanley Kubrick Under the Masonic Moon Under the Masonic Hoped that the boys would come home soon One more day and they'll drop from the plane And splash into the ocean Conspirators got a free ride to the States They turn Nazi into NASA They just couldn't wait Under the Masonic The bankers in the back room The owl sees into the night And the secret will never be told Under the Masonic moon Under the Masonic moon were made by the bankers in the back room The owl sees into the night and the secret will never be told 99, proceeded, 3, 2, 1, ignition Right away, Houston Right, right, right into the night and the secret will never be told Okay, 30 seconds 308 your number Okay, coming through 1500 feet and H dot looks good Right away, Houston Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself.